Welcome! This is Information Service Engineering, lecture number 7, Knowledge Graphs, part 2. In this section of the lecture, we are going to talk about logical inferences that we can draw based on RDF and RDFS. So, we are still on the RDF schema on the modeling level within the Semantic Web Technology stack. And right now, when we are looking first at semantics, we are only considering RDF and RDF schema. So we are not considering here OWL semantics. This comes later on in the next lectures. Okay, to start with, we have to ask ourselves how much knowledge or semantics is there if you are looking at structures like these. So imagine we want to say something about Joseph Fourier. We know that guy already. So we can say that, of course, Joseph Fourier has a birth date. This was the 21st of March, 1768. And he has also a name, a French name, of course. And we can say, yeah, this guy was a physicist. Moreover, we can say a physicist is something like a scientist. And a scientist, of course, is a person. However, we also know that the greenhouse effect has been discovered by Joseph Fourier. And we know that greenhouse gas is one of the contributing factors of the greenhouse effect. We also know a special greenhouse gas. This is carbon dioxide. And we know that carbon dioxide is a chemical compound, which is a chemical substance. But what exactly do we know there? So in general, the semantics of a term from an RDF or RDFS ontology is usually given in terms of its properties and its values that we already see here. But where does the semantics come from? So here is the big difference between modeling with RDF, which means with semantic technologies, or with traditional data structures, object-oriented models, entity relationship models, and so on. So in difference to other data definition languages, RDFS is based on a formal semantics. This means that the specific vocabulary words that we are using, like RDF type or RDF a subclass of, they have a special meaning. They have a formal semantics, which is grounded on a formal interpretation. So formal semantics enables RDFS then to draw valid and sound logical inferences. And this is the major difference between non-semantic technologies and semantic technologies. Okay, give you an example. For example, we say that Joseph Fourier is of type physicist. We know that RDF type could be interpreted as, of course, Joseph Fourier is an instance of the class physicist. And this, of course, relates to set theory. And we can note this down in set theory. And by that, we would have something like a model theoretic semantics. So we would say Joseph Fourier is an element of the class of physicist. And we can annotate and we can write this down with terms or this, the symbols that we already know from set theory. On the other hand, we also know that physicist is a special type of scientist, which means physicist, RDFS subclass of scientist, means that physicist is also set theoretically a subclass of the class scientist. And the same holds here for properties. We have here a property discovered by, which is a special case of as perceived or as perceived by, and uh, discovered by, thereby is a sub property of. And we can also say that discovered by is a subclass set theoretically. In RDFS, it's a sub property of DBO perceived by. So by noting down exactly what it means based on a mathematical notation like we have here from set theory, or we can do this also based on any kind of logics, we have a formal interpretation. We define a semantics in a formal way for exactly this vocabulary. And this makes it different because this interpretation, how to interpret RDF type, this of course must every reasoner, so this is a program which is able to read RDF and make sense of RDF, must know. And based on that, that this is globally defined here, and one can also access this kind of definition somewhere, this is explicit semantics, which helps us to draw valid and sound logical inferences. Okay, let's look at a few examples that it becomes much clearer how exactly this is defined here. So which conclusions can we deduce? 
with RDF, RDFS semantics. We have here again, simple example. We have Joseph Fourier, who is a physicist and physicist again is a subclass of, subclass of scientist. And we know that the greenhouse effect has been discovered here by Joseph Fourier. Let's look at exactly this hierarchy here that we have Joseph Fourier is a physicist and physicist is a subclass of scientist. Simply from this subclass relation and the instance relation, so RDF type, we know not only that Joseph Fourier is a physicist, we can only deduce that Joseph Fourier is a scientist, simply because this deduction rule has been manifested somewhere, somewhere in the semantics of RDFS. And this here is noted down in um, first order logic. So you read this in the following way, you might already know that. So for all i, i is an instance, and c1 and c2, these are classes, the triple consisting of i, then comes RDF type and then class one, and the triple that class one, c1, is an RDFS subclass of class two. Thereby it follows that the following triple can be deduced, which is the triple consisting of i, is also of RDF, uh, RDF type C2. So exactly what we here noted down in red color. Of course, this kind of definition is available then for every reasoner. And if you want to make this implicit um, knowledge explicitly, you simply have to do the reasoner its job. And it will, for example, try to compute um, the closure, which means to explicitly manifest all implicit given definitions in that way. Okay, this is one thing. So you can deduce new facts from a class hierarchy. Another thing, let's here look at the hierarchy of, of, of properties. So first let's look at the properties. This is even more simpler. So we have here again, the greenhouse effect has been discovered by someone. So here I left out Joseph Fourier. So we know that greenhouse effect has been discovered by several people at several points in time in history. And we have here the property discovered by, which is, as we see here, a property. And a property comes with a range and a domain, the other way around with the domain and the range. So the domain of discovered by is something, uh, which means this is kind of a thing, which can be everything, which can is discoverable. And usually then the range discovered by whom or what so usually it's discovered by a person. So your yeah, range is person, domain is thing. What we can deduce here is the following. We can deduce a class membership from the domain of one of its properties of exactly this uh, entity. So let's have a look here. So if we have discovered by and discovered by has the domain thing, we can deduce that the greenhouse effect also must be a thing because there this property discovered by has been used. You can again note this down with first order logic. Thereby you say for all individuals I1 and I2, for all classes C1, C2, and for all properties P, it holds that if you have a triple I1 connected via P to I2, and you know that P, P is a property, um, is of, uh, has the RDFS domain C1 and P has the RDFS range C2. Thereby you can deduce that the individual one must be of RDF type C1. This corresponds here to the domain. And on the other hand, that I2 is of the RDF type C2, which corresponds to the range. So also here, for example, greenhouse effect is, this, uh, is connected to a blank node via DBO discovered by, we don't know who was the discoverer, but what we know is since discovered by has been used and the range of discovered by is a person, this blank note must correspond to a person, so must be of type person. So this is another thing we can here deduce. We can deduce so uh, class memberships from domain and range definitions. Now it becomes a bit more complicated. Again, you see here the greenhouse effect has been discovered by Joseph Fourier. We already have noted down that here discovered by is a property and um, domain is thing and uh, range is person. We already have also connected greenhouse effect to thing and uh, Joseph Fourier to person. But something new we have here, we say that discovered by is a sub property of perceived by. 
and perceived by has exactly the same domain range restrictions as here uh, discovered by. What can we deduce from there? Simply the following. So since greenhouse effect has been discovered by Joseph Fourier and discovered by is a specialization or sub-property from perceived by, we can deduce also that greenhouse effect has been perceived by Joseph Fourier. So we can deduce new facts from sub-property relationships. Reading that again in first order logic, we have that for all individuals I1, I2, all properties P1, P2, um, it holds that if you have the triple I1 is connected via property one to I2 and P1 is a sub-property of P2, the following triple can be deduced so you can connect I1 also via the property P2 to I2. So you see, you can here deduce new facts from subproperty relationship. This is implicit knowledge. This is implicitly given because of the definitions you have there. And exactly these kind of deduction rules, then they are applied by a reasoner, for example, in case the reasoner wants to create, wants to compute the complete closure of um, all of the implicit relationships and making them explicit. So this is what you already can do only with a few vocabulary words like RDF type, RDF as subclass of and RDF, uh, RDF as sub property of as well as domain and range. It will become more complex, more complicated and you can uh, create more sophisticated semantics then based on the web ontology language OWL which will be subject of one of the next lectures. But before we come to that, we first want to introduce the knowledge graphs. Of course, we are talking already now for, for many sections of the lectures about knowledge graphs and semantic technologies connected to knowledge graphs. But we never have given you a definition of what is a knowledge graph and a chapter dedicated simply to you know, the meaning and the importance of knowledge graphs. And this is something we will do in the next part of the lecture.